Let's figure this out. It's gonna be alright. Yeah, yeah. I've never claimed to be the world's best paramotor pilot. Okay, I'm gonna get better at this over time. <laughs> I think I know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to go ahead and roll the footage and show you how it panned out and uh, share some thoughts about lessons to be learned from this madness. There's something very special about paramotors. One incredible thing about flying these peculiar contraptions is that they generally look after you even when you neglect to consider important things like, I don't know, uh, your fuel level. <laughs> All jokes aside, I honestly want this to be the last video of me making errors that I can, with relative ease, prevent. Hence why I've waited so long to share this footage with all of you. How's the saying go? Time flies when you're having a good time? I wasn't sure how to create anything that I could help you guys with. Honestly, I almost felt as though I was losing touch with paramotoring. Since I've started editing this video that you're watching right now, I've reached back into my oldest videos on this YouTube channel. There was something about those earlier days, probably several things really. Fear was noticeable for sure. I re-watched the video where my Speedwing arrived in the mail, or in the post as you British viewers refer to it as. Looking back, I also see how oblivious I was to the whole paramotoring thing. All I'd really known was what I learned in training and everything that Tucker got had shared on his channel. What the hell, Tucker? Why are you so f***ing good at flying paramotors? But here is what strikes me as so odd. When I first got into flying paramotors, nothing bad like this had happened to me, or at least in my mind, it didn't force me to question if this was right for me. We showed them how it's done, didn't we? To put it into perspective, I've ran out of gas at least five times, and only one of those times did it end really bad. And oddly enough, I'm not even referring to this fiasco that you're witnessing in this video. Cool. I think that's just about it, right, for that one side. This other side looks like it may be a little bit more complicated, but maybe not. Oh, I guess I'm not fully out of the out of the sticks yet. Next is to try and find a spot. Oh, fuck, it's getting dark. Way back when I first met Leandra, I invited her to the field that I fly at to witness my flying activity that positively consumed me. As she sat on the field watching in amazement, I'd come in for one last low banking pass as if I were Maverick buzzing the tower. However, rather than pulling it off and looking like a badass, I'd ran out of fuel at precisely the worst moment. The glider shot forward, diving me into an embankment. Like a laser-guided missile, I hit the biggest cactus ever to exist in West Texas. I toppled end over end three times, and I still don't understand how that was physically possible. An hour and 27 minutes hey. so far. Yeah. Uh, rescue mission, halfway done. Once the dust settled, I heard people yelling, Hey! Hey, are you okay? And after quickly assessing myself, Yeah! I'm good! Even though I had big-ass thorns lodged in my face. Perception is reality, or so they would say when I was still in the army. I could have stood up that day and said, nope, I'm done, I'm, I'm out of here, though I didn't perceive it as negative. This story brings me back to this day where I stood miles into the desert far from any trails. The sun was setting, and as you can imagine, it gets a lot harder when it's dark out. Let me be very clear in case any of you want to be Nancy's in the comment section. I was not in any danger. My friend Kyle was in route to help me back to the field. The point is that I was beginning to feel defeated. Yes, it was my own mistake. I neglected to monitor my fuel level. When the going gets tough. And this brings me full circle on this monologue of a video. There is something very special about paramotors. Oh, no, it's still recording. One incredible thing about flying these <laughs> peculiar contraptions is that they generally look after you even when you neglect to consider important things like your fuel level. Paramotors are not airplanes. There are so many pros just as there are so many cons. I know that this is not what many of my viewers want to hear as they invest thousands of dollars into an ass fan. 
but it's the hard truth. An analogy for all of you parents out there. Your kids aren't perfect, sorry to be the one to tell you, but you love them all the same. Paramotors aren't perfect either, and paramotor pilots aren't perfect. It's these imperfections that often expose the most opportunity for growth, like a blessing and a curse. I care about the development of this sport a hell of a lot more than entertaining you. Otherwise, I wouldn't expose several of my most embarrassing experiences. There is a lesson to be learned, and only you can find it. Or you can thumbs down my attempt at making this community a safer place. That is your prerogative as a bona fide keyboard warrior. If you believe that my intentions are good, please click the like button on this video as it helps it become more visible to others who might benefit from a shift in perspective. Subscribing is also very appreciated. And if you want more content on paramotoring, check out my newest YouTube channel, The Paramotor Podcast. I don't drive myself crazy with the edits I post on that channel, but the information that you seek may still be there. Until the next one, I hope all of you have amazing flights or keep driving on your goal to get flying. Bye guys.